Here I'd like to summarize how a lot of the electrical quantities um, relate to each other, like electrical force, uh, electric field, electric potential, and electric potential energy, and how they intertwine, because they all look very similar. And to a starting physics student, um, they can be very confusing and all jumbled together. Um, so the first one is electric force, Coulomb's law, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And of course, just uh, K can also be written 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Try to get that in the frame there. Um, so uh, this, of course, is the, the force between any two charges, K1 and K2, uh, Q1 and Q2, separated by distance R. Um, now, electric field would be the, and these are vector quantities, of course, and they're in the uh, R direction. I should put that in there also, direction of R. So that little R hat represents not a quantity, but a direction, just a unit vector of one in the direction of the radius. Uh, the electric field would be from a single charge, Q, at a position R away, and that's also an R vector. Um, so if we examine these two, that the difference between them is just a single Q. So if, we're just, if we are given an electric field, just a single electric field, from any source, this could be um, um, an R-related, uh, a, a, a distance relative um, electric field, or it could be um, just a constant electric field, which we'll have in some cases. But just if you look at it, um, E times Q is equal to the force. Now, what Q would that be? Well, if this is a Q1, then this would be a Q2. So you may have the electric field from Q1 applying a force on Q2. So that's the relationship between them. So we can take this to other situations where we don't just have two charges, but we might have a constant electric field generated by um, a sheet of charge or a line of charge. There's a lot of a sphere, spherical charge. There be a lot of different situations like that. That's the relationship, the relationship between the force and the electric field. Now we get to um, electric potential energy. So for electric potential energy, we need to go back to that definition that um, F dot dx is equal to a little piece of work done. So there's a lot of uh, scenarios involving the energy and in bringing um, some object in and, and, and uh, statics, electrostatics, we're often trying to bring a, a charge in from an infinite position to a position close to another charge. Um, so that might be the work done there. Um, if we just relate this uh, simply, we might recall that force equals F times delta X. If it's a dot product, you might get the FX cosine theta in there if there's an angle. So that's relating back to the mechanics portion of the, the course. Um, but uh, if we're looking at a small piece of work, bit of work done in moving, uh, let's say a charge through an electric uh, force field a certain distance, then um, that's what it would equate to. We got dW equals F dx. Um, well, since work is equal to a change in kinetic energy, and it's also related to a change in negative change of potential energy, um, then we can arrive at the expression negative du equals F dx. And we can also see that um, if we have a force vector, then to figure out the potential energy, um, we would have to plug in that, let's say in this case, the K Q1, Q2 over R squared. And we're not dealing with a with an X direction, like a horizontal direction, but we are dealing with an R direction. So we're gonna change that to a dr, showing this is a, uh, a displacement in the R direction, not the X direction. Um, if we can, uh, of course, move this, this negative over um, and on all, all said and done, um, we find that potential energy 
and moving uh, an object from one position to another. Let's say if it's coming in from an infinite distance. I'm sorry, we're on the uh, U side, okay? At an infinite distance away, there would be a zero potential energy. There we go. And we bring it into a certain position closer in. We'll just call it U. Um, then we'd be bringing it from an infinite distance to some defined position R. Now this, I'm not trying to confuse things here. We can call this like an R final, R F. But what I'm going to do is, is try to create a U uh, function of U with respect to R. Um, okay, so the integral of negative to U is negative U, and I'll take that from zero to U. And over here, uh, we're going to have a K, Q1, Q2. Those are our, our um, constants there. And the integral of R to the negative second power is R to the negative first power divided by negative one, which leaves us a negative there. And we're going to go from infinity into distance r. All right, so we plug in a u and minus a zero, we still get a negative u out there. And we've got a negative k, q1, q2, and I'm going to just pull that out. And we're going to plug in the r, so one over r minus a one over infinity. Boing. All right. And uh, so one over infin uh, infinity, of course, is zero. Um, we're divided by a very, very large number. And um, we've got this negative u. Actually, I, I probably should have um, done this a slightly different way. I should have gone from like a to b or something like that. So that's where I kind of screwed up this scenario here. Um, so let me just back this up a, a moment here and um, I'm going to call this a u um, position a which was at infinity to a u position b. This will put in more um, global context here. So we end up with a um, negative ub minus a negative ua. There we go. Um, so we get a negative ub plus ua. Let me clean this up a little bit over here equals negative k q1 q2 over r. Now we're getting to um, potential change, change of potential energy. Um, so we take a negative on both sides, multiply by negative, and we get a UB minus UA equals a K Q1 Q2 over R. Um, so now, if what we're seeing here is if we've got a positive, we've got some positive charges going on, um, moving that, let's say that Q2 and towards Q1 is going to increase the potential energy. It's like pushing it up a hill. And that should make sense because if you have a couple of positive charges and you push them in towards each other and then let go of it, let go of one of them, that one's gonna slide away, away from the other one. It's kind of like when you put a ball at the top of a hill, it's gonna fall down the hill. Um, so that's what we're seeing in there. Um, but uh, all in all, if we're looking at UB minus UA, which one is higher? UB is. Uh, the potential of B is higher than A. Remember A, way back at, uh, at zero, would be a, a zero value. Um, if Q1 is negative and Q2 is positive, then we'll have a negative amount here. And then UA would be higher. So if we put a positive and negative charge close together, what are they going to do? They're going to fall closer to each other, um, not fall away. So, and also um, bringing in a negative charge in towards a positive charge 
you don't actually have to bring it in. You can just release it way out near and um, close to infinity, but not quite, and it'll fall towards that other. So that there's like a downward slope there. So uh, what that would relate to is more of a if u of r is proportional to a, a one over negative one over r, it'll look a little something like this in the um, positive x or positive r axis area. So if you did have an object out here, it would fall toward the zero point and fall together. Um, so there's that one. And uh, I'm gonna sum this up on the next page here. So all in all, we've got the force, kq1, q2 over r squared. We've got the electric field. Let's keep this legit. KQ, we'll just say QO, some original charge. And now we've got, so that was brilliant. I ran out of memory halfway through that. Anyhow, so we have the electric force related to the electric field um, by EQ. We have the electric potential energy. And now um, electric potential, the final one, is electrical potential electrical potential energy per unit charge. So per unit charge means we're dividing out a Q. And what that really says is if we have a, um, a charge Q1 and we put a charge Q2 anywhere around it, um, what will the potential energy be if we put it at a certain place and it has a certain charge Q? So it's, it's more general. It allows us to do a lot more things. We could add up many, many, many charges uh, or the electric potential energy is from many charges if we know the potential of one. And of course, that that's, as we're going to see, it works for fields as well. Um, so the electric potential is electric potential energy per unit charge. So it's just like energy dividing out a charge. It is also unitless. And um, just like this up here, UE equals... V times Q. So that comes in handy um, also. And you'll note by this, if you know a potential energy and a potential, um, they're going to relate to kinetic energy if we're talking about motion of charge. So if we've got a certain potential energy from a um, charge within a, within a field, um, we could also say that's equal to a kinetic energy if it's in motion. So that'll come in handy at, at times. That's that's how you work in the uh, connection between the motion of a charge and its potential. So I'm gonna pause right there. Finally, how do we relate force to potential energy and electric field to electric potential? You'll notice here, we got a KQ, KQ, R squared, R, same kind of deal here, kq1, q2, kq1, q2, and we got r squared and r. So we'll see here that f is like a um, like a ue divided by another r, or um, ue equals fr. And look, that has the same kind of format as work, force times displacement. And likewise, our electric potential is going to be electric field times R. Now that gets a little, little funky because you got to keep in mind that if, if E is a function of R, it's not a constant. Okay, then we'll have like a little uh, um, dV equals... E dr type of thing going on um, where you might have to take an integral if there's a if um, electric field is a function of r that type of thing um, and likewise you, you might be able to see we have another or here that e is the derivative of the potential with respect to r um, now this comes in really handy with, especially with capacitors because that little R there 
could be a, a distance between two plates. The nice thing about capacitors is right in the middle, if we have a plus side here and a minus side down here, towards the middle, we've got a nice constant electric field. And it works out beautifully that um, if we have an A and a B side to that capacitor, then VAB, just like up here, is equal to the electric field times D. That is super handy. It probably comes up, you know, 50% of the time when talking about capacitors and the electric field inside of it. Um, sometimes little, little uh, conceptual questions might talk about the fringe effects. Sometimes the electric field isn't exactly constant towards the edge. That's just some, something to take note of. But mainly in the middle of the capacitor, you've got this nice constant electric field. And uh, that is very handy in, in dealing with capacitors. That's all I have to say about that.